I upload daily NBA content on this channel, so if that's something that interests you, subscribe. Also drop a like on this video, it only takes one second and it makes a massive difference. Also real quick, I also have a video over on my, or another 2K talk over on my Patreon. So if you do wanna get access to that, you can go support me over there. It's $3 minimum to get in and you can check that out. But if not, you know, then don't. But today I am talking about something that I want to see happen and why I believe it would be a good decision for both parties. And that is DeMar DeRozan returning to the Toronto Raptors. Now, in my recent, uh, most recent trade video, I did have a trade involving the Raptors getting DeMar DeRozan, but I really think it would be kind of dumb on their part to trade for him. That was just kind of me having no idea what trade I would do for the Toronto Raptors, so I just went with that one. Moving Norman Powell for DeMar DeRozan would be dumb because Norman Powell is like at least 70% as good as DeMar DeRozan and he fits into the team better. But uh, actually signing him is what I want to talk about today because I believe there's a good chance that DeMar DeRozan declines his player option. Now, he's not going to get $26 million a year, but he might get more money over like a three-year deal. So let's say like... 48 million dollars over three years rather than just 26 in one year so he could take the more long-term view of like i'll get this money that i can now maybe there's an argument to be made that after another year his value in the nba is going to be seen as even less so than it already is so maybe in total long term you can get more money over three years by declining that option obviously i do not know the exact specifics of that and that's something that him and his agent are going to have to figure out but i'm just going to take the assumption that a longer term deal with more money is something that he's going to be more interested in rather than picking up that player option especially with there being reports that demar Derozan is not happy in uh san antonio on top of the fact that the spurs will likely attempt to trade him if he does pick up that player option so by actually signing with toronto he would get to dictate where he goes he would get to dictate uh like what his situation is all of that stuff so i do think uh, declining that option and taking a longer term like three-year deal I wouldn't offer him as another team anymore than a three-year deal but like a three-year deal like 16 17 million dollars a year that's in the ballpark that I think he'd be worth so now let's talk about Toronto so uh, Toronto I do think there is a pretty heavy chance that uh, Fred Van Vliet ends up leaving because I think he's gonna get a lot of money um, that could be wrong i could be overestimating that but with this year's free agency class being as weak as it is i honestly think the new york knicks are going to offer him like 22 23 million dollars a year which i do think is definitely overpriced however with the knicks needing a point guard who can shoot and hopefully a guy who can bring in some level of experience he wouldn't be horrible so um i i do think there's a i do think it's very likely that he is going to get a lot of money and the Raptors are probably going to let him go. I definitely would let him go if he's getting like 24, 23 million dollars a year. And in that case, you're going to want to find some scoring outside of that. And with Marcus Gasol leaving in free agency, uh, it seems like he wants to go play overseas. Uh, if not, uh, I could imagine him signing for a cheap deal anyways. Uh, as well as Serge Ibaka's free agency. They're going to have cap space. Uh, I could actually see a world where they bring back both Fred Van Vliet and DeMar DeRozan if the money works out that way and they still hold on to Serge Ibaka, but it's going to be tight. Uh, and again, I think, I think Fred is just going to get offered more money than he's worth. Toronto would be smart to let it go. And, um, and Fred Van Vliet would be stupid to decline that contract. So He's going to take the money. Toronto's not going to be able to keep him, that type of thing. So, um, I do not believe that they're going to be able to hold Fred Van, Fred Van Vliet, and I need to be able to replace his scoring. So, this is where DeMar DeRozan comes in. So, offensively, while DeMar DeRozan cannot shoot the three ball, he is someone that can create offense outside of the three-point line at an elite rate because he's a very good mid-range shooter, very good slasher, and a pretty solid playmaker as a shooting guard. So... You get him in there with Kyle Lowry, obviously they have their connection. Uh, 
you get him there with Pascal Siakam. Siakam might have to shoot a couple more threes, or he might have to be a better three-point shooter. But overall, I think the spacing on this team would still be fine. I imagine your starting lineup would be Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, and Serge Ibaka. Uh, Lowry is a good, a really good three-point shooter. Serge and OG are pretty good, and then Pascal Siakam is passable, at least in the regular season. So I do think the spacing would be fine, especially if they brought some shooting off of the bench. So I don't think that would be as big of an issue as I think some people would think it would be, especially being that you're replacing a uh, very good three-point shooter in Fred Van Vliet for a non-shooter. That is certainly a concern, but again, I think you're going to have to replace Fred Van Vliet regardless, and I don't think DeMar DeRozan is a bad fit. And then on top of that, I think the main uh, thing that Toronto fans are worried about, and I've seen this argument made, uh, that I find a little bit ludicrous uh, that is saying DeMar DeRozan is going to be a huge defensive liability, but DeMar DeRozan is not a horrible defensive player. He's not even like a bad defensive player. He's just not good. I'd say he's like, uh, he, I'd say he's below average, but I'd, I wouldn't straight up call him a liability. Now, maybe for Toronto, which originally had pretty much five good defenders in their starting lineup, they'd be switching over to just four. I don't think that means that their defense is just going to fall off of a cliff. Like, as good as Fred Van Vliet is defensively with his effort and his strength despite being short, he's still very short, and I don't think swapping out him for DeMar DeRozan would just have disastrous effects. I do think it would be better to have Fred Van Vliet over DeMar DeRozan because of the shooting and because of the defense, but... Again, I've said it like 15 times now, I don't think Fred Van Vliet is going to be staying on the Toronto Raptors unless they feel like overpaying him. So DeMar DeRozan could be a cheaper option who is going to be a little bit worse overall, especially fit-wise, but it's going to be uh, a lot cheaper. And then on top of all of this, there is going to be obviously the factor that it would just be nice to see DeMar DeRozan in Toronto again and that is a factor here that it might not make it the best basketball decision but everyone's going to be happy to see it happen and then I think the team morale would improve a little bit even though they already have pretty good like chemistry uh, having DeMar there again I'm sure Kyle Lowry would really love that and then offensively one problem that came with the Toronto Raptors and this particular playoffs was that Pascal Siakam was not a reliable shot creator, and while DeMar DeRozan is absolutely known for choking in the playoffs, I don't think it happened as often and as consistently as many people claim it to happen, and I think he's a better shot creator than Pascal Siakam. Siakam is a better player for sure, but with him struggling how he did in the playoffs because he really cannot create on the perimeter, even in the mid-range really, because of that, he was really struggling in the second round. And if you cut that out and you just get a guy in there who, and DeMar DeRozan who can average an efficient 20 points per game, shooting mid-range shots, getting to the basket off of the dribble, all of those things. Basically, perimeter scoring is more important than big man scoring. And even though uh, Pascal is far from a bog standard big man, uh, he's not... He's he's definitely not a guy who's like creating like doing a bunch of dribbles and hitting a step back mid range shot. He'll do it occasionally, but that's not typically something that he's known for. And Demar Derozan this year maybe had the probably the second best season of his career. So he averaged twenty two points, five and a half rebounds, and five and a half assists, and he shot fifty three percent from the field, which is the, easily the highest field goal percentage of his career. Uh, that's over 5% better than his next best. In the advanced department, he had a 60% true shooting percentage. So it's not like DeMar DeRozan is washed. The reason he hasn't made an all-star game in the last couple of years is because his style of play has died out. He hasn't actually gotten worse. His value has just been decreased by how the, the direction the league has gone. But DeMar DeRozan is not that much different from what he was in 2018 with the Toronto Raptors. And yeah, the Toronto Raptors in 2018 didn't end up going anywhere. Uh, they ended up losing to the Cavaliers, but in and, and poor fashion, by the way. But DeMar DeRozan is like, it's not like you're getting like a, a vastly like worse player even though I do not value DeMar DeRozan as high as many people do because he can't shoot three-pointers, it's not like this is just like a bad player you're getting. 
It's a matter of poor fit that's really holding back DeMar DeRozan from fitting or going to a lot of teams because there's a lot of teams that cannot afford a non-shooter. But I think in the case of the Toronto Raptors, because they need creation uh, off of the dribble on offense from mid-range and from getting to the basket, I do think DeMar DeRozan is a good fit in that aspect. And then on top of that, uh, again, I think you need a replacement for Fred Van Vliet. And in this particular free agency, there are not going to be a whole lot of options in terms of replacement. And then for, uh, or for DeMar DeRozan, I almost said for Kawhi Leonard, which is kind of hilarious. I'm sure DeMar DeRozan would love that. For DeMar DeRozan, I would like to see this for him, like for him personally as a player, because he had all of his things that he was like feeling like the Raptors were losing year after year because of him. And while he's not going to bring a championship to Toronto, that, that move is not going to make them a real championship contender. I have always not really bought the Raptors, so I, I don't consider them that now. Um, I don't think DeMar DeRozan is going to shift that. However, uh, he's going to help contribute to the Toronto Raptors being a good playoff team again, and I think that's something that he needs both mentally and then, again, part of this is I just would like to see it happen. Like, a big part of it is it would just be cool to see DeMar DeRozan play for the Toronto Raptors again. So that is why I believe the Raptors should sign DeMar, DeMar DeRozan, and it's also the best place I can see for DeMar. Uh, the next best place is the Orlando Magic and Maybe he could bring more to that team than he could bring to the Raptors, but the Raptors are a better team that will go further. And they have the connection with DeMar already having played there before. So I think this is just a move that I would love to see happen, and I do genuinely think it's a good move for both sides. Again, assuming Toronto cannot bring back Fred Van Vliet, but also again, uh, I don't think it's impossible that you keep both of them and it still works out. You could bring DeMar DeRozan off of the bench. I don't think he would have a huge issue with that. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the take. Uh, again, if you want to go watch that extra 2k talk that is over on my Patreon, uh, that is the end of this video. Please be sure to like, subscribe for more NBA content like this and cue the outro music.